the number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with content at scale.ai. Wit Studio, one end to end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm here more as an educator and learning from this experience as well because I take a lot of what I learn here and bring it back to my students. For the last decade, I've been teaching social media and new media, and part of that is content and half of that is SEO. How do we make people's work get out there? And so I'm learning a lot from that experience. But today I'm going to be speaking a bit about what it means from the content perspective and then what it means to start marketing inside of the very, what I call the micro niche. These, what TikTok excels at is a very, very small amount of content that you can optimize to make sure that people are watching it, even if it has nothing to do with anything. So today I'm going to be talking about the everyday type of content, a, a genre that's there. So let me start with this quick question. When you, were, when you were a kid, you were asked probably more than once, what do you want to be when you grow up? And if you were anything like you of the past, there's more traditional choices. There was doctor, artist, athlete, scientist, and a teacher. And if you were like me, a fire truck. Um, <laughs> and you were probably asked this quite often from adults who wanted to see where it was going to be from your new growth and perspective. But what's interesting today is that now, according to multiple studies, about 33%, that's like the average of that, want to be, grow up to be influencers, YouTubers, vloggers, or creators. And that's a huge shift in what type of economy will be coming up in the next few years when young people have made this part of their decision of being their professional lives. And TikTok happens to be a, a good place for that type of growth. As we know, video is the most valuable medium on the internet when it comes to making content that people watch, but video itself is a container. It is a box that you have to create content in, which means in order for people to access it, it has to become accessible. People have to have, make sure you have the right words, captions, and subtitles that make people go to it. And so it's very important to understand that video itself may be a very uh, amazing type of material to look at, but it's also very difficult to work with and requires some expertise. A little short history and some context. So to go back to how this all happened, uh, YouTube, when it was first founded in 2005, had this amazing title, Broadcast Yourself. It had this DIY mentality. A year later, Google purchased it and then started incorporating a lot of the tools that we use today, including Content ID. What was an interesting shift was the partner program. The partner program enabled people to profit share, profit share from these platforms. And that's a really big attractor to creator lifestyles. Maker Studios, uh, was then, it was a conglomeration of thousands of channels, was then purchased by Disney, which is incredible, and then Premium appeared, which allowed people to bypass the ads by participating in it. Finally, YouTube developed studios, actual places where people can go and create material. But during this time, in the background, at the exact same time, vertical video was emerging. And vertical video starts from the more of the ergonomic stance of how people use technologies. So the fact you can hold your phone the way you hold it to make a phone call makes it a little bit more easy to acquire footage that way. And what's interesting is that type of uh, material becomes more authentic. Like that was the term that would be coming from it, which is that we're not trying. We're actually just creating material, and it's what to be captured. And so across it, you see Snapchat, the, the kind of the innovator of that type of community. And then Instagram stories, and finally, TikTok. And as we heard from Matilda, how important those types of origin stories are for that type of platform. And it is a competitor in many ways because it is a unique grammar in comparison to other vertical video or in the type of video whatsoever. Each social media platform has its own grammar. And that's the, the most important point, which is don't cross post onto these platforms because the grammar itself has to be unique to that platform. So TikTok has its own space. This is one of my favorite terms. Across all platforms, the creator economy was born. And that the creator economy was, is this big ability for us to understand what it means as a holistic whole of all of the content that comes from everywhere. And this is a conglomeration of all platforms. According to Goldman Sachs, uh, it's currently worth about 250 billion, and they say it could be worth about a half a trillion in the next five years. And so it's amazing how much growth and how much money is being put into this marketplace. And that's the, called the creator economy. So who are they? Who are these creators? Who are the people that do this? So 
Some of you may know these people, some of you may not, and that's part of the, the work. There's Emma Chamberlain, uh, Markiplier, uh, Charlie D'Amelio, Kabi LeMay, uh, and Mr. Beast, Jimmy Donaldson. And so these are some of the most popular, but these are not the only ones. There's tens of thousands of creators, and they fit into every specific genre you could think of. If there is a something you think of, there's a creator for that specific niche. Forbes top 50 creators uh, have a collective following of about two billion human beings, collective, some of them overlap, I'm sure, um, and they have an earned income combined of about 570 million in 2021. And so that's an incredible amount of income going in there. Obviously, most of this happens through endorsements. This is about having trust with your audience. If these creators figure out how to talk to their audience very specifically, brands then step in and, of course, say, oh, well, you're, you're important enough to see how this translates to an audience, and we're going to endorse you. So th this becomes their main method of income. But what are the odds of success for them? The odds of success of becoming a successfully brand-endorsed creator is, are low, really, really low. And it doesn't mean you can't do it. But it is a process in which people think that they could just step in. And these young people who believe they could become creators may not understand that the odds, the significant odds, you could potentially, to become as successful as Jimmy Donaldson, Mr. Beast, you can, with the same odds, get drafted onto two professional sports teams. And that's how the odds are against you because the amount of humans that use the platform by comparison to those that are successful. But that's where TikTok changes everything. Because TikTok isn't like those other platforms. TikTok has a different type of algorithmic style and has a way of uplifting content in a way that isn't the way that traditional media would have really ever considered. It has a new language, it has new algorithms, and new content models and new genres. It is also fairly global, and it has different ways of speaking to their, their micro niche. Uh, Gia Tolentino in The New Yorker says, TikTok is a social network has nothing to do with one's social network. And that's the point about, you don't have to have followers to make it work. That For You page is an algorithmic page, and the mood base might sound cre creepy, you know, if you're in a bad mood, all of a sudden bad mood videos come in. But it is an, as it gathers data, somebody's niche can fall into your space. But I want to talk to you about a very interesting type of the micro niche, something called cores. And these are aesthetics. So aesthetics are also a genre, or a way of speaking to your audience. And these aesthetic cores make up what I call the micro niche. These are very small, but they're extremely popular. Uh, from left to right uh, is cottage core, norm core, barbie core, and gorp core. Uh, and these are celebrities who are playing the role of these cores, but these cores are ground up. They are made from the users themselves, and the users have developed these cores, and other people have jumped in. Uh, he, uh, Jerry Seinfeld is actually wearing clothing from my school, that's Queens College, uh, made by a brand called Kith, and that is a Ruff Russell Athletic shirt, which you could buy for $12 or $175. So that version of it that Jerry Seinfeld is wearing has been uplifted by a norm core aesthetic that is now high fashion. And so these types of things have these ways of moving forward and upward. So I'll just show you an example of norm core and what norm core might look like. What it actually speaks is an amalgamation of aesthetics that blurs the lines of set guidelines and expectations, which shouldn't be taken too seriously. So I'm going to show you this quick video of what Normcore looks like. Right here is my sweat, sweat. All the girls are on me. Yeah. Everybody pay attention. Right here is my pretty boy sweat. <laughs> or clothes, you know? <laughs> so wearing clothes can be just norm core, but it is about the attitude that the creator brings forth that makes it norm core. So the kind of cores that come from these aesthetic values are how the creators understand their audience as receiving that. Millions of views for these cores come from that. But sometimes a core can get even more, more niche, and what I call a genre of nothingness. And Digital Fairy actually just wrote a whole piece about this, vlog like nobody's watching. And this new type of content is supposed to seem almost voyeuristic. It's supposed to seem as though you're making content for no one. And many of these people have no followers, and they gain followers, or they have nothing to say. And their content itself comes from these spaces because they just want to produce this material. These types of vlogs are designed to be day-in-the-life vlogs, or every day of vacation. So I'm going to give you some examples of nothing. <laughs> one. Get ready with me. Get ready with me is the biggest 
micro niche that is out there right now. It makes up a ton of content. Get ready with me is people dressing up, getting ready for their work, putting their clothing on. Um, I think that's Alex Earl, and if you, you might recognize her. Here is a day in the life videos, day in the life videos. This is a video that was very popular several months ago. This is a video that I, I don't have time to show you. It's like five minutes long. Um, it's a day in the life of Google. And she walks through her day with the camera facing outward saying, here's what my day is like. And it is an incredibly popular genre of nothing. And then, of course, there is the very odd versions of these. <laughs> stay at home X things. So in this one, it's a stay at home uh, girlfriend or a stay at home wife, which also leads to very strange rabbit holes. So be careful with that type of content. Um, <laughs> but it is a micro niche of nothing because the goal of these videos is to show they are doing their life. They're just doing things, but it's being captured on tape onto the, onto the TikTok itself, being made into files that we could download. Rebecca Jennings writes, for me and many others I've talked to, day in my life videos are opportunities for voyeurism, sure, but they're also satisfying on a more basic human level. By watching other people be productive, we get to feel productive ourselves. And that's a really interesting part of how these type of content can work, is that these pieces of content act much more like ephemeral, ephemeral, ephemeral uh, um, productivity pieces that make you feel as if you're part of their experience. So here's an example of one. So here's under the hashtag digital diary, which is one of those types of places where you could make, hashtag that ends up in that category. This is a very short video. I'm being alone. I guess I'm kind of like my dad in that way. She likes to be alone because she feels like that's how her dad was. That's the length of the video. That's it. That's the entire th entirety of that thing. So it seems odd, right? So I'm going to show you two more examples. And I'll get to why this feels different than most content. Here's a very strange piece. I'm probably going to cut it early. Okay. So you get his point, right? He's that's his, his life, and then the the ba -ba -doom. And then finally, romanticize your life, which is exactly what it sounds like. So that feels different. That feels like, what are we watching? It's just somebody doing things, but being recorded. But there isn't just that. We have to keep in mind what creators do. These are creators. These are people with now millions of followers. When we look at these videos, we forget this is work. This is labor. They are actually working. You are watching creators create. And when they create, the labor that goes into that is often made invisible. So we don't often take into account that nothing equals a lot of something. It requires a lot of planning. Here's a behind the scenes video of an everyday life creator. In the morning, she scripts her show, creates what she's going to talk about. In the afternoon, she films it, and there's a shot of her actually recording the, the, the content. And then finally, she has to edit. You'll notice on many TikTok videos, it says there's a little editing feature, because you could use onboard editing features on your phone, or you could use the features that, like an official editing tool like uh, Premiere or uh, Vegas or anything that helps you edit those clips. But it's, it's time. It takes a lot of time to create this content. But what they're really doing beyond the creation is creating relatable content. They're creating the ability for you to feel like you understand them or connected to them. Again, a Rebecca Jennings uh, quote, uh, if you want to keep up with internet culture, which is like where I come from, it's my study, Rebecca Jennings is a great source of that. It's to say that coming across as relatable online takes far more work and self-awareness than perfecting a TikTok dance or filming high-budget YouTube pranks. And it feels like that because it seems like there's not a lot that goes into it, but it is work that people are doing. But what makes TikTok the medium that helps us understand where the new market may be? What makes TikTok the unique creator medium that it is? And it's because it's different than the other apps. It's not just a place to put nothing, but it's a place to have comments. And that's the thing that's really important about what, I, the, what I'm getting at here, is that it isn't just about creating material of nothingness, but it's communicating with your audience. And what's interesting about the way that the comments section works on TikTok, in opposition to most every other social media platform, is that you could interact with it by creating content off the comments. So it creates a cycle. So it isn't just searchable, and you can limit it. Each creator gets their opportunity to create how they want to limit their, their comments, what they want to use it for. Can the video be downloaded? Can it be remixed? Can it be duetted? Some people allow the ability to actually capture a piece of the comment and then bring it into another video, creating repeating content. 
Taylor Lorenz writes, what's unique is that you can create content of it, uh, content off of it. You can never do that on YouTube or Instagram. I think TikTok amplified comments and commentary to an equal form of content on par with the original post. So it means the comments itself become part of the commentary of what comes next. So here's an, three examples of those same videos. This is the, the, the young woman in the bed. Maybe one day healing digital diary. I love your videos. They help me so much. Commenting to stay on this side of TikTok. Lonely I am, I'm proud of you. This room is beautiful. And then there's a response, thank you. These are the spaces in which we can also communicate or use TikTok. You don't have to be a creator. You could be inside of the comments section. But this takes skill. As a marketer, you have to understand that they, TikTok creators have high bullshit detectors. They know when it's inorganic or inauthentic. So to communicate with a TikToker or communicate with a creator means you have to really understand its platform. You have to invest the time in seeing how the communication works. Here's an example from the awkward video where it's a poem and then underneath it, do you make every caption because they're lovely? Yes. And so there's this extra way of using the platform. It is a multimodal platform. It isn't a video platform. It means that it covers a bunch of different things that allow creators to make significant changes the way audiences interact with them. Finally, this one with the FIT student, romanticizing school, FYP, mini vlog, digital diary, video diary, aesthetic, college life, fall aesthetic. Romanticizing school has helped me so much with my anxiety. <laughs> that is such an interesting way of looking at how they interact. It might seem silly, it might seem odd, but this is what community looks like inside of a video platform that isn't a video platform. It is far more than that. And it's important for us to understand these types of things because when you market, it isn't about creating just the video content. It means there's other places to utilize that type of delivery method. A micro niche, that's these pieces of content I was showing you, audience is arguably as valuable as a celebrity influencer's place. And that's because these micro niches are repeatable. They are valuable because they have long tail value. People return to this type of content and, and like it enough that they want to create community. And it is what, as you saw from the comments, some of them create a, a value of optimism that are, is out there in this very overwhelming space and these young people find this. And Gen Z is leaning into this. And as the biggest market that's coming up, this is what has to be looked at as what's coming next. So in conclusion, the content of nothingness is probably the content of everything. Thank you. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 